Hi guys, we are back with Carrie Ann, um, Carrie Van Camp, sorry, and Lucas, but also uh, he just had SPML surgery last week. So the casts are on, this is his first day with Move of Us. So one of the things that, that I get at right away post-surgery is working on the weight transfers within the metatarsals. These are the small bones within the foot, right? And so one of the techniques I teach, and this is more in the trainings, where I can come in and, and start using the bands because when you have contractions due to CP, one of the things is the, the foot can't move over. But we kind of want to just have sort of daily updates because a lot of people do do SPML and they don't understand the, the post-surgical protocols. So another thing too is today he went to the orthotics people. So the cast will be cut Friday and he gets his, his orthotics, his AFOs. And so um, I don't like to stand uh, with the cast on. Why? These suckers are filled with cotton. And it's not a true 90 degree, meaning that if he were to stand up, he's gonna slip. And now on top of that, he doesn't have a cast on his right foot. He only has it on his left. And that's gonna give him an uneven pelvis. And so I'd rather just really work on these weight transfer skills. But as you can see with the cast, you know, see how it's acting as one unit. But again, we're just coming in and I'm just working with the toe work. Now, another way of doing the one of the ways I do it is again here. Now, guys, I'm showing you stuff I do, but this is why you come into the clinic or work with a practitioner. But another way I, I work with that weight transfer. Again, the brilliance of SPML is to get in not only with the, the myofascial lengthening, but with those alcohol blocks, right, versus a Botox. And that's what you really want to get in because again, kids with CP don't have this nice toe work where they can, you know, manipulate their toes for going up the stairs or going down the stairs as an example, getting out of the car, right? All these rotational movements come from our little appendages, our toes. And so this is the detailed work you'll be getting this week. We'll be having these lives again on a daily basis so you can just uh, keep an update with him. Um, and we'll go from there. If you have any questions, by all means, comment away. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Go. Hi, guys. It is day two with SPML. So basically, SPML and movement lessons. So one of the first things I want to deal with, because I still have the cast on, right, is I want to start going in and changing the way the hips move in with the trochanter and the pelvis. So now if you look at my hip, right, and what people don't appreciate with the hip is your femur should really be independent. Now my left side is not as good, but again, I've done karate and I can move that all around and do all of that kind of thing, but I can move my hip around all independently. Okay, with, with CP, the tendency is to lift or that march, especially if there's coxavalva going on, with the femur head, right? And it doesn't have that opportunity to go and balance and go and balance. Now this morning, I've already worked on this pelvis and, and the pelvis sings now. See how independent that rotation is with the hips and how he can come down. Now, if I slow it up, what I'm working on is that separation of the hips with the trochanter. See how the pelvis can now go down to the table or the, the femur, sorry and the hip can go up and now all that independent. No matter how I touch him right now, he moves around. Now, the abductors were done very slightly on the right hip. They weren't as effective. He doesn't have a cast on the right foot. And um, so he had one or two poke holes for the alcohol blocks, the balance came in. Now, the left side is a tad more effective. Now, today, that's what I'm working on this afternoon, starting with his session. So as you can see, before I start out, again, I'm just under the trochanter and I'm going up into the hips and see he's already got to adjust himself. You see how sensitive his balance is that he has to check his vestibular because I've gone too far and I've taken away the stability from his system. But so when going up a flight of stairs. So this is where, again, I have to come in with the very small movements and the details and it will take at least one session that I can come in, but I'm right into the, the, the hip socket and coming underneath that trochanter and the femur.
and that's what we're working on today with some of the other things to help him have that movement of the pelvis. But if you just look at him right now before I start, see again, it's almost like a hit, his movements, versus here. Here he's like jello on the right, and then here, see I'm just, he goes away from my touch, where here he just sort of sinks back in. Right? And those are movements, he's, it's not that he couldn't do them before, he couldn't expose himself, either due to his neuromuscular condition or just not having the life experiences. If you have questions, let me know. And I'll see you for day three. Thanks, guys. Hi, guys. Day three. So what am I working on today? Uh, we're working on, or I'm working on, pivot points. One of the things that happens with CP, or I should say doesn't happen, is where you can pivot off your thigh. There's, there's ways of creating fulcrums within the thighs. Let's say if a child's scooting off the couch, or if you and I are getting up, I just can pivot off my chair, let's say, where most of the children with CP want to go this way. Again, what's the one of the definitions of cerebral palsy is oppositional movements versus counter movements, right, or weight transfer. So since I still have the casts on, I want to find, now I've already worked on this leg, and you really can see now, see how no matter what point he's in, he can start moving around. I can bring this all the way in. Now I'm doing this very fast, by the way. This part is not a movement lesson. This is a demonstration in movement. But also, too, that I can move him around in a circle. It's almost like a steam engine. And again, look too, a lot of kids with CP can't rotate out, they can't do that side step. Look at now how that whole hip can move around. This is the, the, the genius, the SPML going into those abductors with the alcohol blocks. So you're working with the, the Theraball in, in various points. And again, this is gonna be in the whole course that I'm putting together on SPML, but I just wanted you to see the progress. And then I'll just play with the pivot points. Now I'm going to have Betsy come around to the other side. Now I haven't worked on this side yet. I haven't worked on the right side. That's going to be this hour. So now I'm here. And again, you can see, I, it's not available to me, but it's, it's not that he can't do it. He doesn't know it's possible. This is where my detail work comes into play. I also see, too, the kick is not there. And this is how I'll start working in this. Now I'm going to do a whole hour now at this level of touch. It's a very gentle touch, as you know, with our work, a very soft touch. This is a really important period to definitely be using the touch of movement lesson because remember, with force, you get force. And that's what you don't want is those muscles to kick in abnormally, whereas with the movement, the rotational movements, then you're going to get the movement. And there he goes. Now I'm into the pelvis. And now I can already start see where he can start tilting, where it's kicking in and transferring over to the other side. But this is where he's going to get his power, the run, the kick, all of those big, there he goes. Now he's really starting to... But see how he can counter and pivot off the Theraball. And I have him in strategic places. I'll move this around as I'm working with him. Because again, see now here he does not know what to do with it. Here I've already started and it's kicked in. And see that weight transfer happens. And that's where you want always variations of movement, but also variations of the technique within what you're working on. That's why there's not everything that you can have a standard protocol on everything, but He's doing really well, so I'll see you tomorrow for day four. Hi guys, how are you? We are into day four. So what's going on today? Well, I'm going to show you. I really worked on opening up not only the hips now, but the back, right? Now that I did that part, and I'll show you quickly what that was, but I'm already going into now my, my afternoon session. I don't use TheraBands a lot, but at the same time I do. And what I'm working on right now are his push-pull milestones. What are push-pull milestones? A lot of kids with CP have problems issue or regulating the amount of power, let's say, to open a door or come back off of a door. Or, or if someone bumps into them, they get knocked out of balance. It's looked at as a balance issue. But really what the issue is, is that 
something that I keep telling you about is the absolute horizon, but that movement within the spine, right, comes into play. You can actually sit up. Comes into play, there it goes. And so I'm using the TheraBands, always with rotation, and so where he can start regulating the power within his spine. Like if I was to push him over, but see, he's learning how, how to come back and get power in that spine. Like if I were to do karate and throw a punch to him like this, right, he can come back and withstand that force. Not much difference. We learn this technique when we're in all fours and we start bouncing back and forth. It helps us with our momentum. But it's a, it's a, a milestone that's very significant in your vestibular system, but it really gets overlooked by most modalities. Right, there we go. Now I can start spinning him. So if Betsy wants to teach him salsa or those kind of things, see these movements show up in our children, right? And look at him, he's smiling, see? You like it salsa, look at him doing, he's dancing. I take advantage when these movements start to show up and see now, I look at his chest coming across and crossing midline. Look at how his hands are working on all of that, right? All these movements are there in a person sometimes with movement lessons, you just gotta go find them, right? It's almost like attracting a, a snake. But again, I can go fast like that now with him and then come up, right? And push back. But this is not a muscle base, right? Everything I'm doing here is with the weight transfer. But look at his spine start to really glide and how he's bouncing. Look at that movement in his pelvis. He didn't have this before SPML, right? But if you want your child not only to walk, but to dance and to climb and to do the things that they're meant to do, these are the developmental movement patterns that you've got to find and be able to put into their system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly just show you what I did in the back of the pelvis. Moment. So coming back here. So this morning, you're good, you're good. It's okay. I'll take care of your pets. So this morning, what I had to teach him to do is now start to lift through his spine, right? So you can see him grow like a bean plant and then come back down. But also now what the SPML lets me to do is actually again now get those trochanters down and grow. And so that's what we spent this morning doing. See, and now look at how he can move and all of these, even with the casts on. If you just had a child that just broke his leg and had a cast on, let me tell you, they're not doing these kind of movements. But I can come in now and see and do all of these kind of movements. Look at how he's responding to my touch. Some of you guys have learned this in training already now. With the hanging techniques, you can see, I, I do everything that I teach you guys. See, look at that now. Look at how he just maintains his balance. It was so funny, this morning I went to do him and he just fell over. And now look at that spine, just bend. It's like a willow tree, right? These are really important interior, not exterior, vestibular movements. This is not something you can teach on a balance ball. It has to be taught to the skeletal system because the bones collect oxygen and let it go. And that's what gives us our buoyancy within our vestibular system. So like if I push a ball down in the water, it will come straight up perpendicularly. Like just if I drop something, it will drop perpendicularly. You use these principles, see how he stays, look at that, nice and perpendicular. There he goes. Thanks guys, see you tomorrow. Hi guys, we are day five, it is Friday. So a lot we've been working on. If you haven't watched our previous videos, every day we're doing an update. Um, today I actually might do two, but we have the casts off. So we have brand new AFOs, but we have the casts off. When the casts are on, the foot tends to slip because of the cotton and it's not a secure 90 degree angle, right? So these casts were made, or AFOs were made now, for a full strike of the foot. They're much more secure because of the way that they're wrapped in and move the foot in. But people think that standing is just from if the foot hits the ground, now suddenly the child's going to stand or walk. And this is one of the biggest misconceptions about working with anyone with CP because that's not where standing comes from. Right now, if I was to push my feet into the ground, I can't stand up. It's not the way it works. For me to stand up, I stand up through my body, right? My feet facilitate it. 
And also too, that still stand is only done by Dallas protecting the Queen of England and maybe the Pope. We really don't stand like that. We're constantly weight transfer. So I have a very deflated egg ball. And what I'm doing right now, and this is gonna be my first task, is transferring the weight into the foot. As you can see now, if you look back at day one, day two, all the stuff that I've been working on is to get this nice pelvis to come into the foot. I'm gonna be doing it from a side. This would be getting out of the car, you know? I can go and move over here. I'm gonna bring the foot out a bit. I want all different variations right now of him transferring these core movements, not core strength, into the foot and back again. And that's how the system starts to get used to now the AFOs, but also to the new foot after this kind of a surgery. The questions have been great, the stuff that's coming into me, just keep them coming. Um, I'll have a bit more time today to answer back. And today we have our Facebook Live where we're working on where I do my videos, reviews for the week this afternoon. Thanks guys, see you later. Happy Friday. Hi guys, how are you? I know you guys missed me after like having, uh, everyone was screaming, where's day six? Um, we're at day seven. Um, we need to get Felipe behind the camera so he, he does his. Anyway, when you're working post SPMO, one of the big things is they come in and they do the abductors, right? Um, what they do is, is they, they poke the holes in, there we go, and the alcohol blocks, and it allows those, those spine muscles come out. So I'm using my walker track to just allow his system to feel hanging of walking. What does hanging mean? Well, one of the things that our kids, especially if they're used to a walker or, you know, they, they, they grab onto something, right? Well, now I have to teach him that, that again, that, that full arm swing as well as that abductors. So all of these kind of movements, just transitioning over the feet, um, I'll be working with him and walking as well. He can walk, it's not that that's, that's an issue, but we're just really fine tuning now all those nice little skills, so like that. See, if he feels he's gonna fall, he'll prevent the walk. And this, I want him to just get the sensation that he's not going to fall. Because right now, even if I let him go, he'll slide down or he can slide up, but he's not gonna fall. <laughs> once he gets that that he's not going to fall then all the good stuff is going to come out but that's just a juice to getting this to his new body you know people forget like just when we have can have minor little um surgeries and stuff but you know it's like getting someone else's in cars you've got to adjust the seats you've got to adjust the mirrors well when you give someone a, a new body to work with you know there's a lot that their minds have to get used to in the movements and again, I just, uh, I can just play around and do what I need to do. If he gets tired, he can sit in. Or like here, he balances off a little bit. Let him start adjusting. Transition. And from the sitting and into the standing. And again, in from the sitting. Whoa, you got it. And into the standing. Can you do it without me? Hi guys, we are at day 10. So he's been working with myself, Felipe and Claudia, more so Felipe and Claudia this week. We'll be having um, five of these next week. So one of the things that I'm working on now, so he's just walking, spinning, jumping and all of that. I need to, need to do a, a GoPro cam on him to show you what he's up to as far as his just, his just daily movements and his habits. But one of the things now that I'm going after again uh, is the metatarsals. So the metatarsals are the small bones within the foot. Yeah, you can go in there with, with technique, but what I'm looking to do now is to elongate the movement. If you were to step out and throw a ball, right, you need a much longer foot movement versus just these small movements. But the foot bones, and I'll show you on, on um, Frank's severed foot, really should float, right? Everybody thinks that standing is this. Uh, 
how many times do I have parents here, and, and I don't mean any disrespect, they grab the ankles and they place the foot down. That's not standing, right? For some reason, for kids, we always want standing to be like those serving the Queen of England, the beef eaters, and that's not standing. We stand, we move our foot around, we hyperextend sometimes, right? But the whole point of doing all of this is within these gorgeous little bones, the metatarsals, right? They're meant to move wherever you move and counter. So that's where I say, when I see like say pronated, people are looking at that and I say vision because I know most likely the eye is turned in and it's turning in the foot because the counter response is off. So what I'm doing here is, is I'm, I'm using various techniques of, of the theraballs and I can go lengthwise or sideways. This is sort of stuff that you learn in training in the segments, but I just go in there and I'm elongating these movements and that allows the asymmetrical countering within the foot. shocked you see me get really low someone asked me the other day again why is my table so low it's built for me this is the way I like to work it's not uncomfortable for me because I'm always you know working on a functional movement that counter and I'm here there is a job hazard of stinking boots but it's okay and I just work various ways now I can go much faster now this is the one beauty too, like look at how fast now I can get with this left foot. If you go back and watch him, like even three weeks, four weeks ago, before SPML, you know what I mean? He was torqued and contracted in with it, and now I'm getting up to where he's getting much faster. This is where I watch my clients, like out in the hallway, he's jumping into the chair and jumping out again. He's being a kid, and so I can go with greater speeds. If I was working on Felipe, let's say, I could really spin it because he throws a ball at night or did at 95, 96 miles an hour, right? And those feet have to, to complete that movement. And that's where, too, you learn about momentum and how the body functions and you work around it. If I was working with the baby, it would almost look like this, right? And you just wouldn't have those same movements because I'm going after their momentum and their movement vocabulary. Thanks, guys. Day 11, going on SPML, day 11, post. One of the things that people don't realize is that you have to start teaching the system how to start transferring weight, especially, let's say, up and down stairs, curbs, out the front door, right? A lot of our kiddos, and you can see this right now because it just started for him, when the leg goes up, he dominantly wants to go out and possibly people might say, oh, he's hyperextending. What he is not doing, it doesn't matter what the legs are doing, what he's not doing is transferring his weight, that's it, through the pelvis and over to the foot. So again, notice that I'm using the cables not to support posture, but to support counter oppositional movements or counter movements, counterbalance, things that he doesn't get to play with that too often because if he commits to falling, he wants to fall, where is this takes away that sensation. But he needs to start learning how to, and there he goes, where I now can play with his foot and this step. It seems really simple, but the one thing that you cannot do to get walking to happen is by applying pressure through the foot. Right? If I ask him right now to just push really hard with his foot. Yeah? Can you ask him to push really hard through the foot? Just see the difference? And then he loses it. Right? That's not where weight transfer comes from and balance comes from. And it looks like the child is way more compromised. That movement comes up through our pelvis. And our pelvis needs to move this. Oh, come back down with the foot. I'm going to Right? And that drop down and that drop up. Those are the movements and that's why with SPMLs they go after those abductors as well as through the foot and you need to coordinate those movements together to get the optimal out of the surgery. So that's... So okay, let's do that again. <laughs> do another one. Oh, I'm already going. Going? Just okay. for fun. <laughs> So Facebook, um, uh, sorry, for, for SPML Day 11, 
Well, tell the boy to have some fun. So this is where you've got, you look at this, you've got crisscross applesauce, as I like to call it, folded legs. Um, the little boy is doing his lotus hums. <laughs> Next, we're gonna work on levitation, if you'll let me. <laughs> 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 okay, we can't work on levitation chest yet, but we're getting there. Now look at his stance just from again from the mucking around. Um, we're only a couple more minutes into it, but that was pretty fun. See the difference now in him coming over here? Now that's a stand on the right leg versus him tilting over. See now he's countering with the foot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he needs me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so when you do that now, come back here, come back here. And now, now thrust the kick, kick. That's it. That's what we do for Chuck Norris. So come here, thrust it. That's it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Now stand up and do it. Stand up. Chamber, bring the leg up. And you be Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 And that's a dress kick. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys.
Hi guys, SPML 14. This is the last day. We're leaving uh, one day early uh, to get them home. Belgium's about to go on a huge lockdown. But one of the things that we're working on, and as you can see, he's walking amazing. If you haven't seen some of his, his post-operative and even pre-op videos um, with him walking and stuff, which is great. But most people are looking for walking is heel to toe. But they don't realize in walking, what has to happen is your body, all parts of your body has to feel this pendulum where it is. Now, if you can see the way I'm doing this, he's swinging his foot back and forth. He is not lifting the leg and placing it down. That's what you see a lot with CP or any of those things. So the next thing too, what it also has to do is the hands. Hands down. And I have to let them start to swing. That's it. So he's so used to using his hands as a balance. And see how I start to work on the counter swing. These are milestones that are really important. This is why kids dangle and they spin and do all these kind of things. He just hasn't had the experience with it. See how unsynchronized that is. And so this is what we're doing on the last day times to, there he goes. But he has to feel the sensation of gravity through his appendages. And then play with it, there he goes. And see, that's throwing the ball. That's playing tennis. That's doing all those kind of moves that most of us just take for granted. But you're gonna be seeing a lot from him because as he goes home now, these kind of skills, especially as he plays with his brothers and gets on the trampoline, are going to go with him and start maturing out. And, uh, and he'll start playing with, with all these new torque skills. Now, as you can see, I didn't do this on the other side. So here he's got one arm swinging and the other one is static. So I'll have to be doing this on both sides today, but working on a lots of things. Vision is being worked on, his momentum, his vestibular, and his overall gait and walking. We just have the equipment here to, to just uh, guarantee it in a sense. You really want, as you can see, I'm not holding him up, but he just needs to know no matter, see there, look at him counter. He just needs to know where he is in space in a safe environment. You never use this kind of things or don't let your therapist either do it as a vestibular support for posturing. You can't have external posturing. It's just not going to replicate into the system. You only see it during therapy, but it doesn't go home with you too well in a lot of cases, sorry. Thanks guys, and uh, thanks for watching us.